on the global race to find a vaccine for the respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, is heating up, with U.S. authorities set to grant approvals by this year. One frontrunner is Moderna, the U.S. pharmaceutical giant, which says it has an mRNA vaccine. All well, this virus can cause serious lung infections in the young and elderly. Well, this comes amid previous warnings of a triple epidemic in Singapore of flu, COVID-19, as well as RSV. Moderna's global senior vice president joins us now in studio. Well, thanks for joining us today, uh, Dr. Francesca Chedia, a global senior vice president for respiratory vaccines. Uh, Dawn, you've got a question. For yeah, I mean, first off, you're here in Singapore. Welcome. Tell us what brings Thank you here. Thank you. So we have uh, um, a number of uh, um, discussion in the pipeline for our respiratory vaccine portfolio. So we are meeting um, a number of experts here to discuss our uh, pipeline and uh, products. Uh, mRNA vaccines famously used to fight COVID-19. Uh, do they work on the same principle as far as RSV is concerned? Absolutely. So mRNA vaccine is an information uh, molecule. So it provides an information that goes into the body, in the cells of the body, and to instruct the protein, uh, the body to produce a specific protein that will elicit and mount an immune response. So similarly to COVID-19, we have developed an RSV vaccine that codes for that specific protein that develops the antibody titers. Tell us something about the timeline here. How confident are you of getting approvals for this vaccine for different parts of the world? Well, um, to get approval, you need to have um, a strong and promising candidate vaccine. So we have uh, uh, run a phase three efficacy trial, which is quite a big efficacy trial. It's probably the largest phase three efficacy trial with more than 37,000 individuals, 60 years and above, that have been enrolled in several countries around the world with a good proportion enrollment in Asia and including in Singapore. So so um, because we have observed very strong efficacy results, um, we expect to be able to file within uh, the first half of the year in uh, U.S. Uh, in U.S., we have been granted priority review. Um, and at the same time, we have been granted priority review in Australia. And therefore, we are going to follow up very closely also in other countries, including Singapore, by uh, within the year. Right. Oh, you mentioned there's a trial. I, I take it it's the one involving 37,000 yes. participants. And some of them, I also take it, were here in Singapore. Yes, absolutely. Uh, how else does Singapore contribute uh, to your, the findings that Moderna has made on this vaccine? Every country contributes to uh, to give um, uh, good results. And, uh, and we are very proud of the fact that actually we have enrolled uh, um, quite a good proportion of uh, different ethnic uh, um, uh, diversity. So it's important to include countries like Singapore. And, uh, and uh, we have uh, very promising results. And now we're doing also analysis uh, by uh, the different countries, so that's quite encouraging. Dr. Chedia, since we went mask off here in Singapore, we've noticed you know, a rise in respiratory illnesses, um, not related to COVID-19, but uh, you know, people turning up at the clinics, children as well. And, and some people are reporting anecdotally that it's worse, you know, they're, they're, they're particularly unwell. Is that something that we should be concerned about at all? Well, um, let's say our bodies have taken a pause for quite a while because we were masked, right? So we didn't, were, we didn't encounter the virus while we were during the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm. And now we, uh, the, the virus are coming back and they're coming back very strongly. And there are people in the community that have never seen the virus like the young children, right? So, um, and depending on the type of virus, of course, the, child, the children may be transmitter themselves. Um, and therefore, it's important that uh, we are alerted now. Uh, uh, and uh, we do, uh, of course, we start doing diagnosis uh, whenever it's possible. You say being alert now and doing diagnosis. What is diagnosis looking for? And what do you find, based on what you find, what do you think we should do 
under these circumstances, yeah. given that we are going to be mask off and we're going to have to be learning to live yeah. with more infectious diseases. Yeah. So it, it, the, doing a diagnosis is very important from a public health point of view because it informs the community on the burden of disease. And I will want to go back, for example, to the ad older adults. There is a very difference between the knowledge of, for example, RSV in uh, children versus older adults. There is no pediatrician or mother that doesn't know about RSV in children, and children get diagnosed about with uh, for um, RSV. Uh, but this is not the case in older adults because there is no treatment. So mm. often people do not get diagnosed. If you don't get diagnosed, you will never know how many cases you will find. Mm. And this is one of the biggest issue of RSV uh, around the world, particularly in the older adults, which are a very susceptible population um, given their age, uh, particularly those who are 60 years and older, and they have a weaker immune system uh, because the immune system is less fit at that age, or also have other um, condition, medical mm -hmm. condition that can aggravate any kind of respiratory infection. So this is important knowledge to have. Mm. I'll be aware of it and to look out for it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. well, thanks so much for joining us in studio today, Dr. Francesca Chedia, Global Senior Vice President for Respiratory Vaccines at Moderna. Thank you so much.